Welcome to 13 News Now at 4. I'm Regina Mobley. And I'm Janet Roach. Happening now, organizers are setting up for the Patriotic Fest at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront. But the wet weather at the beach and around the area is less than ideal for the cruise. Our chief meteorologist Jeff Lawson has a look at the rain chances through the evening. Well, the rain chances are relatively low, but they're certainly not non-existent. We've got a few things popping up. These are actually fair weather cumulus that you can see right now on Skyview, but we have some areas where it's bubbling up a little bit more right now out in Center Virginia. In fact, we have a flood advisory out not too far from Charlottesville. They've pounded out there yesterday in some big storms today. There's another one north of Richmond. What we're most concerned with is what's moving out of North Carolina. Like yesterday, it's tending to move a little bit more to the north. It looks like it's tending to sort of hold its own or even dry out a little bit. So the question becomes what happens later this evening? We certainly know a few things will be popping up. We've seen that throughout the afternoon. A few very isolated showers right now. A little bit of a shower that's even almost a thunderstorm west side of Williamsburg heading up there into New Kent County. And of course the stuff I just mentioned starting to move northeasterly out of areas of the Pamlico Sound up toward the Albemarle Sound and now heading even north of there. So some of this will move into the area a little bit later this evening. Current temperatures though, they are hot 88 and with that humidity so high, that dew point in the 70s, it feels more like the lower 90s out there right now. So here's what we expect to happen as we go a little bit later on into this evening. A lot of what's down to the south sort of breaks up or stays down there. But did you notice one or two of those showers came up over the region during the uh, evening? And then as we get into the overnight, it'll tend to be Central Virginia that gets more of the action. So so carry the umbrella or hopefully if they're setting up down there, they can dodge some of these very isolated showers this evening. As for the weekend, well, I'll have that outlook coming up. Thank you, Jeff. Well, the official start of hurricane season is just hours away and there's a push to make sure people are prepared. That's right. In Chesapeake, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam reminded people how hurricanes can affect families. In fact, many people are still dealing with the fallout from Hurricane Matthew in 2016. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton is live and Allie, you spoke with the homeowner who is rebuilding years later. Janet, they are still without a kitchen. Their appliances sit in the garage, and she says the worst part is they canceled their flood insurance four months before Hurricane Matthew hit. Now, in Chesapeake this afternoon, Governor Ralph Northam says it's important to have flood insurance even if you don't live in a flooded zone. Now, this is why I want to show you. Take a look at Angela Wilson's kitchen. She says the water damage was so bad, she and her husband had to rip all of the walls out and basically start from scratch. Right now, they're doing doing as much as they can with the money they have. Wilson says you can't worry about what happened in the past. She says you need to be prepared for the future, even if you don't live in a flood zone. Get flood insurance. It doesn't matter. Just get flood insurance because you never know what's going to happen. Now coming up on 13 News Now at 5, hear more from Governor Ralph Northam and what he says is so important about the evacuation routes and what you should take with you if you have to leave. Live in Chesapeake, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now. As Allie mentioned, the governor also talked about Virginia's evacuation procedures. Last year, Virginia changed to a zone system for hurricane evacuations. And here's a map for South Side, Hampton Roads. People in Zone A will evacuate first, followed by B, C, and D. Now, take a look at the peninsula map. When a storm is approaching, emergency managers will determine which zones are most at risk. They will consider the storm's intensity, path, tides, and more. We also have a map for the eastern shore. Once a zone is ordered to evacuate, officials will give orders for those residents to move to higher ground or even leave the region. Right now, health officials are monitoring our beaches and waterways, tracking bacteria levels. This is a live look at the Chesapeake Bay. This week, several cities have had swimming advisories. We see swimming advisories at beaches in Hampton Roads all the time. Yesterday, there were advisories at several beaches in our area, including Hilton Beach in Newport News and here at Yorktown Beach. Peninsula Health District workers collected samples Tuesday. Those samples showed the bacteria levels at Hilton and Yorktown were higher than they should be. The Peninsula Health District collects samples at five beaches once a week, and Newport News Waterworks actually conducts the test. If the samples exceed the state's water quality, Quality. Then they retest until those samples return back to an acceptable level. Here we test for uh, enterococci, 
it's not a disease causing organisms, but it shouldn't be there. And if that can be there, then the uh, disease causing organisms, which are going to be in smaller number, could be there. Tonight on 13 News Now at 5, I'll tell you what environmental health officials say causes the high level of bacteria in our waters. In Yorktown, I'm Nico Clemens, 13 News Now. Developing now, the FBI is making a new push to help find two missing children. They vanished from James City County in 2014. And take a look at Amina and Bilal Kandil. Now, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released these new age-enhanced photos of the children. When they disappeared, Amina was 10 and Bilal was 8. Now, investigators think the children are with their father, Ahmed Kandil, and they were last seen getting on a flight to Ukraine. And now the FBI says, and as I play this here so you can take a look, that they are possibly now in Turkey or Egypt. Anyone who may have information about the family is asked to call the FBI, and we have information on how to do that, plus more pictures of the children and their father on 13newsnow.com. A family is suing a Newport News dog kennel after their dog died while at the business. 13 News Now first told you about the case involving Fenway the dog and Coastal Dog Services last August. Fenway died from an injury at the kennel. Police charged the kennel owner with animal cruelty, but the criminal case was dismissed earlier this year. Now online court records show Fenway's owner has filed a civil suit against Coastal Dog Services. A hearing is set for June 12th. A historic moment has, moment has come out of the General Assembly special session. Virginia is primed to become the 33rd state to approve Medicaid expansion, which will provide health care coverage to about 400,000 low-income Virginians. Now, under the Affordable Care Act, a family of three can now make up to $28,180 a year to qualify. 13 News now spoke with one Virginia Beach woman who makes about $200 too much to qualify for Medicaid under the current system. And you can't really do what you want to do to provide for your family and, uh, and you're giving it your all and you ask for some, for some help to get me the help that I need and you're turned down because you make too much money. Once the governor signs the budget bill, Medicaid will expand starting January 1st. North Carolina is getting closer to approving its next budget. State lawmakers passed a nearly $24 billion spending plan today after quickly approving budget adjustments. The state house has debates and votes scheduled today and tomorrow, and then the budget heads to Governor Roy Cooper's desks for approval. And the new budget includes pay raises for teachers, troopers, correctional offers, officers, that is, and other state employees. Today, the Army Corps of Engineers commissioned its newest ship. The new survey vessel is called the Yule. The 61-foot catamaran will be used to lift debris out of the water. 13 News Now reporter Elise Brown was there for the commissioning ceremony and has more on the ship. She's faster, a whole lot cleaner, and smarter. Let me get the crane operational. This is a very fun four and a half million dollar toy. They actually let me operate it. <laughs> Stephen Feldhouse is captain of the Ewell. It's the Army Corps of Engineers newest ship. It's replacing two ships, including this one built in the 1950s. The primary mission of this vessel is survey. It's uh, surveying the federal channels, encompasses about 100 square miles from the Norfolk district. Using sonar, the ship detects the depth of the channel. Our shipping channels are basically our roadways of the, of the water. Dusty Brook analyzes the depth and compares it to what the standards say it should be. The red are the, the shallower depths, so up here this is uh, going up the side slopes of the channel. The ship removes debris above and below the surface. If items are too large, they can call in help from divers or salvage companies. One of the most unusual things they've ever removed, a car. Where did you guys find it? That was in the Dismal Swamp Canal. Did you find out the backstory of the car? I did not, unfortunately. Did you still kind of want to know? Yeah, it would be really neat to find out. On top of the Ewell's mission, Captain Feldhouse adds one more thing to the list. The whole goal is to be happy, then you have an enjoyable work day. In Norfolk, Elise Brown, 13 News Now.
This weekend, some local sailors will say goodbye to their families. The USS Jason Dunham deploys on Saturday. The guided missile destroyer will head to the Mediterranean and the Middle East. 13 News now wishes the crew safe travels on their deployment.